and welcome back. This is the second video in a three-part series of forming a read with me. If you missed the first video, I will link it in the description box so that you can watch all three videos in succession and then um, we'll have made a read together. Okay, in order to complete the steps for this second video, here is a list of the things that you are going to need. Wax, uh, preferably paraffin or bees. Uh, the cotton twine that you put into soak in the first video should still be soaking. We'll still be using the wine cork that we used in the last video. The piece of GSP cane that we have already hand gouged, folded over, and beveled. The fresh razor blade we will continue to use. A Rieger mandrel. A Rieger set of pliers. And we'll continue using our 22 gauge brass wire. Okay, so if you remember from our last video, we had just finished beveling. From here, we're going to go ahead to our next step, putting in the crosshatch. You might already be familiar with the crosshatch from my uh, Ways to Darken a Bassoon Read 2 video, where I made mention of this, but I've had several comments since then with questions, so let's dig into this a little bit more in detail. From the first wire all the way down to the base of the reed, what I do is put in a series of diagonal lines. I first go down the reed on one side, then up the reed on the other side in order to create a series of X's. Now, you must go deep enough that you rough up the tube, but you don't want to go so deep that you actually go through the cane. By roughing up the tube, you can, in essence, end up darkening the sound. It's ever so slight, but every little bit helps. The next bit that I like to do is scoring. Scoring and going actually through the cane. So what I do is on either side of the center of the tube, I do a series of three cuts into and through the actual tube. And this is from the second wire all the way down to the base. This is why I love to use a wine cork, is because I can use the sharp pointy end of the razor blade, stick it in, push it all the way through so it sticks in the cork, and then pull it down. This is a way that I'm sure that the um, GSP cane is not going to roll on the round surface of the cork so that it slips and I would end up cutting myself. So this is a reason why I use the wine cork over the dowel. I avoid scoring in the center largely because if a piece of cane is good and hard, sometimes it wants to crack directly up the center. If I've already created a line, that can go straight through past the first wire that I have put on and go directly into the blades. It can also create a tube that is shaped like a diamond. Now, your bocal is not shaped like a diamond. Your bocal is shaped like a circle. So what I'm trying to do is create a circle so it fits directly on the bocal. The diamond shape is not going to do that as well. So I try to avoid scoring directly down the center to avoid a crack that goes into the center and that diamond shape. By doing both the cross hatch and the scoring that goes all the way through, at times I have seen that if a piece of cane was going to arch on one side and it wasn't going to be a diamond completely, but maybe the diamond was going to be off center, so okay, it would look maybe more like this because I'd scored off to the side, I found that that cross hatch will disperse that energy so that you end up getting that circle just the same. And I'll try to include a picture of it so you can see that uh, the portion that would have split further will have that dispersed portion of the crack because the energy will shift um, up to the left or up to the right in order to make sure that it just doesn't go the whole way. Be sure to cross hatch and score both sides. Next up, I refold over the cane and I put a first wire on. I put the first wire on at this stage because if a reed is prone to cracking, sometimes that first wire can stop it from cracking into the blades. After I have the first wire on, I take my dampened cotton twine and I wrap from the base of the reed all the way up and over the very edge of the tip of the blades. 
Now, as I'm doing this, I'm careful that I'm not pulling on it because if you pull on it as you go, you can end up slipping the blades so that they're not directly on top of one another or they slip inside one another and I want them directly on top of each other. So make sure that as you do this, you are sure that it's firm so that it's not going to slip anywhere and that it's supported, but not so much that you're pulling on it and you're slipping those blades within one another. The next step that I like to do is waxing the mandrel. Now I use paraffin wax because I'm allergic to honey and I have yet to figure out if I can use beeswax because that bee honey issue. So uh, either paraffin wax or beeswax should work fine. But the next step that I like to do is waxing the mandrel. Uh, this works as a form of lubricant so that as I'm forming the mandrel, it will slide in more easily. While I am waxing the mandrel, I make sure that the mummified reed that has the cotton twine on it is back in the water so that it is absorbing that last little bit of water before I put it into forming. Next up, I take my Rieger mandrel and my dampened reed with the cotton twine, and what I do is I open it up and I slip the mandrel inside. Now, before I go too far in with the mandrel, I like to splay the bottom of the reed to make sure that that scoring that I did did go all of the way through. From there, I put the mandrel in the direct center and I place it against something firm that I know that is not going to move. For me, in this case, it is my, uh, my breastbone. Um, and from there, I slide it straight down the mandrel to the line on the mandrel. Quick tip here, make sure that you are not twisting as you place it on the mandrel. If you are twisting it as you're sliding it down the mandrel, you will probably have more cracking in your reed than necessary. The next step, I like to unwrap a portion of the cotton twine and place the third wire on. The third wire, because it is going to be the wire that holds it in place and also helps with the sealing of the tube, I triple wrap. The goal is for the first wire and the third wire, when finished, to be facing the same direction with the twisted part out. So start with the first wire away from you as you start wrapping your first wire. If you have a hard time with uh, wrapping wires, there is a video of that and I will link that down below. From here, I continue unwrapping the cotton twine and I put the second wire on. At this point, the second wire, I put it at about a quarter of an inch away from the third wire. Now, this is not where it will be when it's a finished read, but just for the drying out portion as it's forming and to make sure I get that really round tube at the base, I put the second wire a quarter of an inch from the third wire. That's from center of wire to center of wire. After I have the second wire secured, going in the opposite direction of the first and the third wire, I go ahead and I squinch the tube, making sure that I'm getting that perfectly round tube directly below the third wire. After I have the uh, base of the tube secure, I then squinch the tube in the second wire and the third wire. After that, I rewrap the reed and I set it to dry. Okay guys, this wraps up the second video in the series of Make a Read With Me. I hope you are enjoying this series. If you are, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment if I'm doing something in a different stage than you um, that you have a tip or trick with or that is just you do it differently and you'd like to share. I would love to hear about it. So please take a second and leave me a comment. And if you wanna make sure that you never miss a future video um, as we finish out this series, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Welcome to the first of a three part series that I am so excited about. Making a blank with me. Now when I say making a blank, it is the beginning stages of making a read. Wax, uh, either paraffin or bees. Not earwax, don't use earwax. How do you make a diamond? There we go. Is that better? Oh, see, see, they teach you this. They don't teach you this. Okay. <laughs>